Now in this video, I'm going to show you on how to upgrade the internal SSD drive on your M4 Mac Mini. Now, if you get the baseline 256 gigabyte version of the Mac Mini, to upgrade to a one terabyte or two terabyte version, you have to pay about $400 and $800 respectively. That's definitely a ripoff considering that these days you can find the Mac Mini on Amazon for under $530. Now, unfortunately, you can't just use just any old M.2 drive. You have to use a special proprietary SSD drive, which is not available through most official OEM manufacturers. But you can find these uh, specialized drives online by third parties that are a little bit more sketchy, so you definitely want to be careful. And I recommend if you're going to buy these third party SSD drives to go through AliExpress, Amazon, or eBay, some place that gives you some sort of buyer protection just in case you get a faulty drive. Now we upgraded the stock 256 gigabyte drive to a one terabyte third party drive for about $180. You can also get a two terabyte drive for around $320. That's less than half of what Apple charges for. Yes, there are some inherent risks to buying a third party drive in terms of long-term reliability and performance, but I've been actually uh, running this one terabyte drive for over a month now, and it's pretty much on par with the factory Apple SSD. Now the install process is actually quite simple and straightforward only takes about 30 to 40 minutes and let's get into it now it's important to note that some of the things that you're going to need besides a m4 mac mini keyboard mouse and monitor is you're going to need access to another mac in order to get into dfu mode you're also going to need a thunderbolt cable to connect the two macs together now, typically these SSD upgrade kits come with a set of tools. The Torx screwdriver set that comes with these kits typically is only good for really stripping your screws in your Mac Mini, so you definitely don't want to use them. I would recommend getting a proper precision screwdriver set, something like this, which is relatively affordable. I'll have it linked in the description down below. The first step is after you've backed up all your important data is to turn it over the Mac Mini bottom facing up. We're going to use a suction cup to pry open the bottom lid. You're going to see the edges lift up quite easily. We're going to use a little plastic pry tool to go around the edges and there'll be some ball clips that kind of hold this cover into place which we can easily pop out. Now on the uh, back right corner you're going to have a little cable connecting the power connection. You don't need to unplug it. We're just going to lift this cover and place it aside. Now you're going to see about eight T5 screws in the outer perimeter of this inner back plate. This is kind of a heat sink for the Mac Mini and once we have all those screws removed you can lift up this plate and you want to be careful because there is a ribbon cable connected to this. We're just going to also place this aside like we did with the previous plastic cover. Now you're going to see the fan assembly. Here we have two T5 screws located at the bottom and two smaller T three screws located at the top. We're going to just remove those four screws and we can lift up the fan assembly and also place it aside. And once we do, we reveal the SSD slot. You can see that the slot looks kind of like an M.2. Uh, basically, you have a T8 Torx bit that we need to remove. So use a T8 bit to remove that. And once we do, we can slide the SSD module to the back to take it out of the slot. Now you can see that once we remove the stock Apple 256 gigabyte SSD drive, you can see that the whole architecture form factor and slot matches our aftermarket SSD drive. Obviously we're using higher capacity NAND flashes, but this third-party SSD should fit perfectly into the Mac Mini and we're just going to place it in the exact same way as we removed the stock drive. So we're going to slide it into the slot. We're going to secure it down with the T8 Torx screw and uh, once we have that secured we can uh, replace the fan, screw in the appropriate screws and then the uh, inner heatsink plate screw all those uh, screws back in. After that, you can put in the bottom cover, which just uses friction to pop into place. Now that we have our blank SSD installed into our Mac Mini, we're gonna need to go into DFU mode to recover Mac OS and install the operating system onto this drive. In order to do that, we wanna hook up an HDMI connection to the Mac Mini with a monitor. You also can hook up your keyboard and mouse as well. And we're gonna use the middle Thunderbolt 
connection port to uh, hook up a Thunderbolt cable, and I'm going to use my MacBook Air to be my other Mac. Now we're going to need to go into DFU mode, and in order to do that, we're going to need to hold down the power button, and while holding down the power button, we're going to plug in our power to our Mac Mini, and you're going to see that the front LED indicator light will flash orange, indicating that's in DFU mode. On our MacBook Air screen, we can see that it says that it's detected a device that's into DFU mode. Do you want to allow that connection to this Mac? We're going to click allow, and then we're going to go into our finder if it doesn't pop up automatically, and go into locations. You're going to see that we have our Mac Mini connected into here, and it's in DFU mode. It's going to ask us if we want to revive or restore this Mac. We're going to go into restore, and it's going to say that we're going to restore and update. We're going to go ahead and continue with that. Now, if you're using an older base Mac to do this, you might need to install a firmware, but in most cases, if you're using the Apple Silicon, uh, it will actually just automatically download the operating system and go through this process pretty seamlessly and easily. It's going to take about 20 to 30 minutes to download the full Mac OS software it's, since it's a couple of gigs, so it's going to depend upon your internet connection speed, but it's going to go through the process of pretty much uh, installing the whole OS and all the firmware and everything you need to the Mac Mini and uh, just let it do its thing. And eventually, once the uh, screen of your Mac Mini that's connected to your monitor will turn on, you're going to see a progress bar with the Apple logo, and that's indicating that it's actually installing the recovery OS onto the Mac mini and it's going to just run through through the process and once completed you're going to get a prompt on your MacBook Air or whatever Mac that you're using that the process of restoring has been successfully done and you can actually disconnect the Thunderbolt connection from your Mac mini and once you do so it'll automatically reboot you'll hear uh, the Mac boot up chime and it will just go through the initial install process when you get a new Mac. So you can go through all your different settings to set up your account as well as restore from backup if necessary. And once you're into the operating system, you can see that we have basically just under a terabyte available. And in terms of the speed difference using Amorphous Dismark, I benchmarked the stock Apple 256 gigabyte drive to be around 2.9 gigabytes a second in terms of read and about 2 gigabytes a second in terms of write on the sequential performance. The aftermarket 1 terabyte drive is about 2.8 read and about 3 gigabytes a second write. So pretty much on par or roughly around the same performance as the stock drive, but obviously we've definitely increased our overall capacity to a significant extent. Now, I did run Blackmagic speed test for around 24 hours just to test out the overall stability of the SSD drive, and I didn't encounter any issues thus far. And uh, during these past few weeks, just right around a month, had had no issues with this drive, and uh, certainly uh, works great for me, but I have no idea how this will fare up long term, whether this thing is going to last a few months or years. Now I personally think that the upgrade we've made to this Mac Mini is definitely worth it. We've quadrupled the storage capacity and improved a little bit of our read and write performance. And uh, from my standpoint thus far, the overall stability and performance is pretty much on par with the stock drive. Now you do wanna make sure that you have all your important data backed up at all times, just like any other PC. And uh, just in case if anything does fail, uh, keep the stock drive so you can always reinstall it back in place and put this thing back to stock. If you guys have any specific questions about the install process, the SSD, or anything like that, please make sure to leave that on a comment down below. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and have post notifications turned on. We'll see you real soon in the next one, and take care.